hi. I'm taking advantage of the quiet. A good book and a cup of coffee. He's not around. You haven't got any idea where he is, by any chance, have you? Makes me very nervous. There's one thing having a gopher around the place. When you can see it, you know what's going on. When you can't see it, then that's when it gets a little bit worrying. He makes me very nervous. Very nervous when I can't see him. Yes, well, that's very funny, isn't it? Cheap old gag, Gordon, though, I have to say. Spider, it's not up to your usual standards. Now, come down here and have a look at a video. I've got a video I want to show you. Come down. Why you all fall? I'll give you a hand down in a second. Wait a minute. Right. This is the gopher of the opera. And Gordon will love it because Gordon is in it. I'll give you a hand down, let me start it off, all right? <laughs> Don't swing from up there, you'll fall. Yeah, have a look at this. I oh, hope this thing works. The battered old thing. You'll like this. It began, like many things, down in Gordon's burrow. Being underground, he'd been having problems with his television reception. And this particular evening, his picture had gone up the spout 10 minutes before Hill Squeak Blues, which is his favorite program. Which is why, moments later, he was standing on my doorstep wearing his cutest, most ingratiating smile. All right, I said, come on in, you know where it is. Thanks, Philip, he said, and he scrambled for the TV remote. There was an audible sigh of relief as his paws closed about it and he flopped down into his favorite beanbag. Television flared into life, and Gordon sat there all evening, mesmerized, shoveling alfalfa-flavored crisps into his mouth with one paw, while changing channels with the other paw, avoiding the commercials with all the consummate skill of a downhill slalom skier. I watched appalled. Gordon the Gopher was turning into a TV addict. There was only one cure. Gordon needed a good, strong dose of culture with a capital C. And I looked through the arts and entertainment section of the local newspaper, which I just happened to have here. It's called the Shepherd's Hedge Bugle, and I found what I was looking for. Here it is. It says, the Shepherd's Hedge Opera House proudly presents the Hairdresser of Seville. Opening night this Wednesday, 7.30, dress formal. Gordon, we're going to see an opera, I declared. <laughs> oh, he said. There was a short pause followed by, so what's an opera then? It's a play, I told him, you know, where they sing rather than speak. Gordon didn't seem too taken with that idea, so I tried a different approach. The, uh, the royal family go to the opera quite a lot, I mentioned casually. Gordon was impressed. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. He respectfully wiped his greasy paws on his T-shirt and said, The royal family? Really? Well, all right. I could go for some of that then, didn't you? I remember you saying that. It's formal dress, I told him, so you'll need your dinner jacket and a bow tie, and I'll pick you up at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. Well, I was ready by seven o'clock Wednesday evening, but when I called round at Gordon's burrow, he was having problems, weren't you? Is this bow tie he called up from the inside? I, I, I can't get it to... Here, I said. Try this, dropping one of my old elasticated bow ties down the hole. There was a, cool, thanks, Philip, a, a twang and an ouch in rapid succession. Then Gordon appeared, dressed in his dinner jacket, his dress trousers, bow tie, and his red baseball boots. He insisted on giving me a twirl. Didn't he? He's very smart, very smart. Yes, great, smashing, very debonair, very posh, I told him. Now hurry up or we'll miss the bus. When we arrived at the opera house, the foyer was already bustling with people waiting to take their seats. It looks like the cream of Shepherd's Hedge societies here tonight, I told Gordon. And Gordon said that knowing Shepherd's Hedge, it was quite probably just condensed milk. We only just managed to sit down before the house lights faded and the overture began. Then, as the curtain went up and the first act started, there was a sudden crunch and a rustle beside me in the seat. Want some, said Gordon, thrusting a rather loud bag of popcorn underneath my nose. Scolded a man in the row behind us. I'm sorry about that. I decided that perhaps it would be a, a wise move to confiscate the popcorn until the interval, so I did. Gordon sighed wistfully and sat back in his seat to watch the opera. But within half an aria, he was bored. Now, a bored gopher is an unpredictable gopher. And I didn't realize that he had a block of bubble gum in his pocket, but he did. And he began to chew it. 
and he began to blow bubbles with it. Then he thought he'd go for the record, blow a really big bubble. Needless to say, he did, it exploded. Gordon shrugged and smiled sheepishly as I tried to peel the bubble gum off his face, which had plastered itself all over it, but it wouldn't come off. It had stuck fast to his fur. Well, it's your own fault. Look what happens if you won't keep still, I hissed. You'd better go to the bathroom and try and wash it off with some hot soapy water and come straight back. So off he went. Well, I didn't know he was going to get lost, did I? But he did. After several wrong turns, Gordon found himself in a dimly lit corridor of the bubblegum already beginning to harden and contort his features into something less than his usual handsome profile. It's no good, he said to himself. I'm lost. Not that he was worried. I mean, what could possibly happen in an opera house, right? Gone was the posh flocked wallpaper, the velvet drapes and the carpeting here. It was all peeling paintwork, pipes, old props. And he could hear the faint sound of singing coming from above. Somehow, he'd wandered into the very bowels of the opera house, beneath the very stage itself. There he saw four stagehands sitting round an old table playing cards. This time, he would just sort of saunter up and cough politely. <coughs> he thought. And he was about to do just that when he spotted his own reflection in a mirror. The sight of his bubble gummed up face gave him such a shock that he let out a startled yelp. The stagehands turned towards the noise. A ghost! The phantom! Run for it! They cried. So they did. Uh, hello, fellas, squeaked Gordon to the now empty storage area. He sighed a deep, melancholy go for sigh. Then he brightened up. What he saw, was it? Could it be? Yes, it was an elevator. At last, he stepped onto the platform, pushed a large lever by its side. <laughs> Gordon was suddenly rocketed through a trapdoor and onto the stage in the middle of Act Two of the Head of <laughs> Seville. <laughs> With a loud squeak, ah, he flew up into the air, where he paused for a brief moment before plummeting back down and disappearing through the trapdoor again, leaving chaos and consternation in his wake. Meanwhile, below the stage, Gordon apparently was no longer alone. Something coughed. <laughs> Gordon whirled around and came face to face with a ghost. Ah! He cried in horror. Oh! Cried the ghost when it saw Gordon's face and promptly vanished into a brick wall. Uh, was it you? It asked suspiciously. Was it me what? Said Gordon, still trying to catch his breath. Scared them blokes off. There's such a thing as union demarcation, you know. I turned me back for five minutes and whoop, they're gone. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. The ghost floated out of the wall. Here, you're not the haunt inspector, are you? It asked. Oh, no, 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 said Gordon. I'm Gordon the Gopher, not Gordon the Ghost. God bless. I thought you was the haunt inspector for a minute, because I'm not a ghost myself yet. You're not? said Gordon quizzically. Could have fooled me. No, no, no. I'm only a spook, see? A trainee ghost, said the spook. I've just started. It'll be another two centuries before I make ghost. Then in five centuries, God, who knows? Maybe even phantom. But the problem is, I'm useless at halting. Gordon, however, had had an idea. Since he'd been wandering about in his bubble gum, he explained he'd scared a number of people. Rumours were bound to start. So all the spook had to do was to cash in on them by making a few judicious manifestations and voila, one well-haunted opera house. Brilliant, mate, brilliant, said the spook. Thanks, you're a real lifesaver. Oh, I lifesaver, go back. It's my little joke, you understand. Don't mention it, said Gordon. But if you could direct me back upstairs, the spook was only too happy to oblige. Gordon followed his directions, well, as many of them as he could, and eventually found himself backstage during the interval. But now, he was lost again. Gordon wandered about aimlessly until he heard voices coming from behind the dressing room door. Inside, the manager and the cast were in a state of panic. Antonio Tagliatelli, the lead singer, had got the hiccups and couldn't get rid of them. They tried patting him on the back. They tried hanging him upside down in a wardrobe while he drank a glass of water backwards, but nothing worked. Of course, what he really needed was a short, sharp, uh, excuse me, shock. Ah! Cried Antonio in perfect C-sharp when he saw Gordon. But before Gordon could even begin to start making excuses, the door to the dressing room opened and Antonio Tagliatelli himself stepped out. 
picked Gordon up, kissed him on both cheeks, despite his bubble gum, and said, Thank you, a small hurry thing. Look, you're on my hiccups. Now the opera, he sighed. Thank you, thank you. Well, of course, I couldn't believe it. It could only happen to Gordon. He seems to have this uncanny ability to wriggle out of trouble. I told you about it a little bit earlier on. I expect it's something to do with burrowing out of tight corners and that sort of thing. But I'll tell you something. Come on, come on. It's the last time I'm taking Gordon to the opera. Next time we can go on his own, if he can turn himself away from the TV, that is, because thanks to Gordon and his go for the opera act, the spook went on to the Ghoul Awards in Transylvania, where it picked up two eagles for best overall fright and best supporting moan. And in recognition of its exemplary theatre haunting tactics, it was actually promoted to full ghost. Then it returned to the opera house, which it continued to haunt successfully until it was turned into a bingo hall. After that, he moved on to a much bigger, much better, more prestigious theatre to haunt. In fact, it could be this one. Gordon? 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 Gordon! Well, I thought that was very good. Excellent. Your acting is getting better and better. No way, Gordon. Not more bubblegum. I got into enough trouble with it last time. They... <laughs> oh, very good. And I'm not cleaning it off your face. Go and do it yourself. Serves you right. <laughs>